were entering into Philip, the uh, <clears throat> the pragmatist. Next slide. By way of introduction again, our Savior, after a night of prayer, he chose 12 who were his main focus to be his witnesses. And so uh, <clears throat> his prayer is this, I in them, talking to the Father, and thou in me, that they be made perfect in one, the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. So you see, the, the, the Lord chose a community of 12. And he spent uh, uh, most of his three and a half years with just these 12. And he gave us, you know, that uh, kind of principle that we need to have an inner circle. We, yes, we might be ministering to other people, but we need the inner circle. This is the inner circle of 12. And they are one, all right? Uh, just like the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one. One in love, one in fellowship, and also one in mission. As God is a community of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so the Lord wants to have a community of uh, God's people and God's leaders that will follow him. Next slide tells us the Lord chose 12 of them. He knew their personalities, both their strength and weaknesses. In fact, uh, <clears throat> they were very, very ordinary people. And so the scripture reminds us that God actually chosen the foolish things, the weak things, the base things, the despised things, the things that are not. Why? Because when we look into the Bible and talk about these 12 uh, ordinary disciples, you find that uh, no flesh will glory in his presence because God chose them, each one in their own way, each one with their own life, each one with their own mission, and each one with their own death. Not what they were, but what they could become by the grace of God. We talk about John, very self-centered, power-hungry, and yet the Lord loves him unconditionally and entrusted him uh, with uh, Jesus' mother and the gospel. He wrote the gospel of John, and then first one, one, two, three, John, as far as Revelation. Last week, we talked about Peter, hot-headed, very impulsive, but also very cowardly, they're denying the Lord Jesus Christ three times. And yet Jesus forgave him and strengthened him and used him in many wonderful ways. So the Lord knew your personality. The Lord knows your strength and your weaknesses. And yet God so desired to use you. And then number three, next slide. And when the Holy Spirit came, and the next uh, Thursday, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit himself. And it is only the Holy Spirit that has been given by Jesus Christ to us. That the Holy Spirit will transform us, will empower us. And so the scripture reminds us that the Father will grant us according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. So we'll be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. And then we shall also have power so that we can witness, be witnesses unto Jesus Christ. One at the same time in Jerusalem, Judea, in Samaria, unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So by way of introduction, now let's look at the man now, the man Philip. We <clears throat> Next slide. And uh, uh, next slide. He was born in Bethesda in the, <clears throat> near uh, the Lake of Galilee. And he was well versed in the scriptures. So it tells us Philip, after Jesus had found Philip, Philip then he found, he found Nathaniel. And said unto Nathanael, he said, We have found him 
of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And then Nathan and Nathanael said unto him and said, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. So here was a religious, a believer in the Mosaic law. And he was also waiting for the Messiah. So he has a, what we call a godly heritage. Next tells us that he was one of the twelve. So Jesus invited him uh, <clears throat> to follow him. His name actually means the one who loves horses. He can uh, speak, uh, he could speak Greek. And the Greeks could identify him. There were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. So there's a connection there. Next, we find him very practical. Next uh, <clears throat> slide. And when uh, they needed bread to feed the uh, 5,000, and Jesus asked Philip and said, where are we going to get bread? And so Jesus answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may eat a little. It's a very practical. Very rational. He says, you know, we uh, even if we have uh, 200 penny worth of bread, it will not be sufficient and so on. Very practical. And then he's helpful. Very helpful. And when the certain Greeks, Greek, uh, Greeks uh, came by to worship and they uh, saw Philip, because Philip, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, spoke Greek. And so, uh, they uh, says to uh, Philip, sir, we would see, we want to see Jesus. So the uh, principle here is this, we need to learn to reach to our own first. Uh, the ones that we have the connection uh, culturally, language-wise, and so on and so forth. Uh, because they will be, uh, the connection there, they will be easier to reach. Next slide, we find that he was quite literal. Literal <clears throat> means that he take it at face value. And then because of that, he was very confused. All right. <clears throat> the Lord said, you know, if you have known me, you should have known my father also. From henceforth, you are knowing him and you have seen him. But Jesus said unto him, Lord, show us the father and it will be sufficient to us. And Jesus said unto him, By not being so long with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And how is it that you are saying, show us the Father? So, literally, he just wanted to see. Of course, he could see Jesus. But uh, Jesus was talking about, you know, knowing the Father. He says, please show us the Father. And the Lord says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. All right? And so he was a bit confused. But anyway, we're going to see how the Lord works with him. Next now, we see the first reaction that he has. All right? Next uh, <clears throat> question. When, when you first, for example, heard of Jesus, how do you respond intellectually and volitionally? Volitionally mean, uh, uh, means... Uh, giving uh, your life to the Lord and said, I will follow you. Now, he was the third disciple Jesus called. All right, Jesus knew he, his heart, what he could be. And so uh, Jesus called him. And then he brought uh, <clears throat> Nathaniel to Jesus Christ. So Philip found Nathaniel. We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now, the first response he has now, he is depending on his what we call religious background and his what we call education. So he knew about Moses in the law and he knew about the prophets. 
And uh, <clears throat> so uh, uh, he, he realized that, hey, uh, that, <clears throat> that uh, uh, Jesus of Nazareth is a son of Joseph. Now, when you look into it now, he called Jesus of Nazareth, a physical place. He called uh, Jesus the son of Joseph, what we call a human uh, aspect of it. So uh, uh, his understanding was uh, uh, what we call uh, on a human uh, 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 on the human ground. So let's look at uh, the next slide there, because we see here. All right, next slide. Andrew, for example, Andrew first find his brother Simon and said to him, "We have found the Messiah, which has been interpreted the Christ." Now, uh, for uh, Philip, it was on the human aspect. Uh, he was not uh, like Andrew. Really, what we call a uh, uh, enthusiastic, a positive uh, uh, enthusiasm. Uh, Philip was more reluctant to uh, identify Jesus with the same kind of confidence that Andrew had. Now, that was his first reaction yeah, because of his pragmatic nature, because of the fact that uh, uh, he was brought up in a different, what we call religious culture. So uh, he, he tended to he has a tendency to see human aspect of Jesus Christ before the divine elements. And I'm sure that, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, we also have that kind of uh, first reaction. I still remember, of course, uh, when I first heard about Jesus Christ, uh, I heard about, you know, Christmas and that uh, Jesus came in the world. And then the Good Friday, yes, you know, Jesus died and uh, and uh, and uh, Easter, Jesus rose up again from the dead. But my religious uh, background was very different. Uh, my family, we worship uh, idols and we have ancestor worship and so forth. And so we have our own God and goddesses. And uh, I was brought to think of, uh, you know, that, uh, Jesus is a white man's religion. And so the white people can believe in that. We will have our own religion. And then, of course, you know, there were times that I went to church. Uh, it was the church next to the school that I was uh, studying. And because I was a prefect, that means that I have to be in school uh, from uh, 6.30 in the morning to 6.30 in the night. And then I was kind of poor at that time, so I didn't have much money. But the church uh, usually have lunch services, so lunch services with lunch, with food and so on. So I used to go there and try to mix around with uh, uh, Christians and then have my lunch there in church. But, you know, I still had to believe that it was just a white man's religion. Now, Let's look at the next question as we reflect it, all right? All right. How much time passed before you took Jesus' claim seriously? Now, here was uh, uh, <clears throat> Philip. Jesus traveled from Galilee, which is where Philip uh, was born and and uh, and uh, had his, uh, what we call, uh, fishing. And uh, <clears throat> after John, the Baptist was in prison. And, uh, and 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 Philip was wondering, if Jesus was the true Messiah, who then was John? Because what happened was this now, uh, Philip, uh, first of all, believed in John first, all right? And then later on, uh, he, he uh, transferred his uh, uh, <clears throat> belief to Jesus Christ. Then now John the Baptist was in prison, all right? Uh, then uh, uh, he, he was wondering, all right, now what happened? Uh, is Jesus who are the one, the true Messiah, that's going to uh, bring uh, in the kingdom? Well, it was in Bethesda, his hometown, that he was called with the other four. All right, so it took actually uh, three years before he could understand uh, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
there was a process of growth in understanding. So actually, uh, for yourself and myself, it uh, depends on our basic personality and also, again, <clears throat> on our religious background before God can work in our hearts and our lives. So that's why we need to understand. For example, some people, like the Apostle Paul, they need to go through what we call trauma, right? Big event, trials and trouble. <clears throat> Then they will come and trust in the Lord. And some, uh, like Peter, uh, they need an inspiring talk, you know, so that they can be motivated and challenged and so forth. Some, like uh, uh, Abraham, for example, they need a, a what we call logical thinking. So God deals with uh, Abraham in a logical think, uh, 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 thinking way. So, uh, 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 and, uh, and so that uh, Abraham was his friend. And so God talks to him and then in a logical way, began to, uh, in a process, began to uh, work in his life. Or else we can be like Moses, they will feel the guilt uh, that <clears throat> when uh, uh, they, have a, they have a quick sense of uh, uh, feeling uh, guilt after uh, they have sinned or done this and so forth. And so that when you preach about sin and about the uh, uh, punishment of sin and so on, they are very quick uh, to understand. They can, they, can, they can internalize it. So it depends on our personality and depends on our religious background. All right? And uh, <clears throat> that's how God works in my heart, in my life. Uh, it took uh, what we call, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, my mother's uh, 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 sickness. She was in the uh, hospital for one whole month. I began to wonder, you know, uh, what's going to happen to her if she died. And we were very sad. We were crying away, this and so on, with our mother and so on. Well, thank God. And, and my mother uh, was okay after the month. Then one day, you know, after I played rugby, uh, that was my idol. And then I fell sick for one whole uh, uh, week. I was so sick with pneumonia and I thought I was going to die. And then I began to pray to God and say, God, uh, you have to have mercy upon me. If there be a God, work something in my heart and my life. So that time uh, <clears throat> will pass. Then we will take Jesus' claim seriously. So I went to a, a meeting, a young people's meeting, and sat at the back because I didn't want people to know that I was there and so on and forth. And the first time in my life, I heard about Jesus Christ who, uh, who, who invites me and says, come unto me, all ye the labor, heavily laden, and I will give you rest. And that very night, I said to the Lord Jesus, Lord, if there be... God, have mercy upon me. Lord Jesus, if you really die for my sins on the cross, please save me. And that night, the Lord saved me. The Holy Spirit worked in my heart and my life and gave me the peace that passes all understanding. Right, so, uh, so much time has passed, all right? And uh, God knows your heart and your life. But each one of us have our journey. Like Philip had a journey. Next we find then there was a testing time, a testing time for Philip. And same way with me, uh, there was a testing time for me. When was the last time God provided you with a unique opportunity to grow your faith? Jesus knew the struggle, the intellectual question that uh, Philip had, and the emotional struggle regarding who Jesus really was. But you see, God gave him a lot of what we call divine opportunity. In fact, a lot of what we call object lessons, a lot of what we call divine activities. There were many miracles before the big test. For example, Jesus changed the water into wine. That tells us that Jesus is a master of quality. He healed a young boy that uh, <clears throat> from a distance that Jesus is a healer, but also the master of distance. Distance is no problem uh, to Jesus Christ. 
That's why we can pray to, to the Lord. He might be in heaven, we are on earth. That distance is no problem with our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then uh, he healed a man with a 38 years of paralysis. And so uh, it's a matter of time. Uh, so uh, uh, time is, is nothing to our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then with that now, he claimed that by these are what we call signs, science miracles. Science miracles are miracles that authenticate the messenger and the message. And so Jesus used these sign miracles to say, I am the Messiah. I am the Son of God. I am the Christ, the anointed one who is God and prophet and king. And uh, I'm Jesus, the one that is God, my uh, your Savior. And this, uh, and then he claimed that he's God. And so Philip uh, uh, had those emotional difficulties and problems. And so we see the next slide. And Jesus uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, talk about it. He says, uh, the Jews persecuted Jesus and tried to kill him. But Jesus answered and said, my father works, he told, and I, I am working. All right, he's working. He is uh, working the work of the father that has sent him. All right, the work of redemption, the work of service, the work of sacrifice, the work of love. And therefore, why? The Jews sought to more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but also said God was his father, making himself equal with God. So our Savior with all these miracles and even uh, breaking the Sabbath to heal somebody. And then he says, my father uh, works and therefore I work. And so when he said that the Jews understood that, that he was saying that I am God. God, the uh, <clears throat> second person of the Trinity. Right then we next do the next slide now. They give us then, <clears throat> all right, the, the word process, all right, with the sign gifts. But now he, here is a very unique process, a very unique opportunity, all right. Now, when Jesus lifted up his eyes, he saw a great multitude, 5,000 over men. And uh, <clears throat> they, they were coming. And then that by the time, you know, they were uh, pretty hungry. And now our Savior zero in on Philip, uh, of all the disciples. He purposely said, Philip, where are we going to get bread that these may eat? So our Savior was testing him. Because, you see, because Jesus knew what he would do. Why? Because he is God himself. Uh, he's the one that can uh, multiply. And he's the God of uh, of uh, <clears throat> of uh, uh, nature uh, and multiplication that can take five loaves and two fishes and do what needs to be done. And then, of course, Philip answered him again, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that everyone may take a little. So, next slide. So, we have there, again, Philip's pragmatic answer. All right, human standpoint. He was saying, hey, uh, even if we have uh, 200 penny worth of bread, 200 penny worth of bread is what you call eight month wages. Even if we have eight month wages, it will not be enough. It's a kind of a irrational uh, question, Lord, you are, you are uh, ans uh, asking me. And, and, and then none of that, they don't even have that much. And so Philip failed with a purely rational and logical point of view. And, uh, and don't, uh, don't forget now uh, that, uh, that he was in the midst of a lot of what we call divine activities. If you read in the gospel, all right, the first two years of Jesus' ministry, out of the three and a half years, a lot of miracles, a lot of sign, sign gifts and so on. 
But after those two years, and then a year and a half after that, there were less of those things. There are more what we call teaching and so on. And so, uh, again, uh, 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 our friend there have forgotten those same gifts that have been authenticating Jesus as the Son of God. And of course, you remember in this incident, Andrew, at least uh, the other disciple, located a boy with five loaves and two fishes. And uh, at least in his heart, he at least believed that Jesus could multiply. And Jesus could multiply. And he multiplied the five loaves and uh, two fishes to feed 5,000 men. Now, next now, we see the, uh, <clears throat> the confusion that we talk about. Uh, uh, all right. All right. <clears throat> when did you actually believe that Jesus is God? Now, for Philip, after three and a half years, uh, <clears throat> then Jesus announced he was going away and then uh, make him more confused. Uh, they were thinking that he was the Messiah, all right? That means that he was going to free them from the Romans, a kind of a physical kingdom. But now Jesus said, listen, I am going away, all right? And uh, <clears throat> I'll be uh, taken by the, uh, uh, the uh, Jewish leaders, and then I'll be crucified. But on the third day, I'll rise up from the dead, and then I will be going <clears throat> away. So they panic in fear, all right? And uh, and uh, in his in, in insecurity and so on. So uh, Jesus then comforted them. Jesus said, "Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me." So he uh, he tried to comfort them. He's telling them, "You believe in God, believe in me, because I am God." And then this uh, uh, then he said, "In my Father's house there are many mansions, and I go and prepare a place for you." And then I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you shall be also. And whither I go, I go, you know, and the way you know. And so uh, uh, next Jesus slide, Jesus responded to Philip. Again, he said this, that he is both God and man. Then Philip then asked him, Lord, okay, she was a father and you will be sufficient. He needed clarification. Jesus said again, he said, have I not a long time with you? And has thou not known me, Philip? You, uh, he that have seen me, have seen the Father. And how say thou show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. And the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. sake. You see the sign gifts again, the miraculous sign gift and so on. And the Lord is saying the true nature that he is, he is actually God in the flesh. All right. And so now, uh, the, but, but thank God, next slide, the revelation came. Uh, to the empower uh, and uh, empowerment to the Holy Spirit uh, after the resurrection, Jesus came and said, "Peace be unto you." And then He breathed unto them and said unto them, "Receive ye the Holy Spirit." And John sixteen fourteen tells us that the Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus Christ, for He shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. And so the Spirit of God is going to uh, glorify Jesus as the one, as the Son of God, as the one that is God in the flesh. And uh, he will be the one that will show it to uh, Philip and show it to us too. And then he will be the one, the Holy Spirit will be the one that gave us a power. And then we will be witnesses unto him. And so uh, uh, Philip, yes, he believed. And he preached in Ukraine. And you think of the uh, problem that we have in Ukraine today. And the churches there uh, have been started by Philip, missionary Philip. And of course, he was crucified on a tall cross in 
Turkey, which is next to uh, Ukraine. And the symbol of uh, of, uh, of Philip will be the loves of bread. All right? So let's look at some refraction together. Refraction together. Okay. Now, in view of Jesus' claim, all right, some people say, well, you know, uh, Jesus is actually uh, <clears throat> a great moral teacher. All right. But you see, the, the scripture reminds us now that there are false prophets that come into the world, that, uh, <clears throat> that every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Jesus Christ. Jesus, God our Savior, Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One who is God, Prophet and King. So Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. So Jesus Christ is God that came in the flesh. So he's more than a moral teacher. In fact, C.S. Lewis, uh, one great uh, philosopher, he said, you know, uh, either Jesus said what he meant, that he was and is the Son of God, or else he's a madman or something worse. And C.S. Lewis, you know, when he first started, he didn't believe in Jesus Christ. He was a philosopher. But when he examined the uh, the uh, historical account of Jesus Christ and all the uh, evidences and so forth, he came and trust and believe in Jesus Christ. He said, if we are sincere and honest, we cannot deny the logic inherent in the historical account of Jesus Christ. All right, next now. Uh, so uh, next uh, uh, thing there. All right, so Jesus said this, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The only begotten Son of God is Jesus himself. Jesus heard that they cast him out, and when he had found the man uh, that he healed, uh, they have been cast out. Jesus said unto him, Do you believe on the Son of God? And Jesus himself claimed to be the Son of God. So if we sincerely seek after the Lord, we shall find him. All right? And uh, for myself, the fear of death uh, uh, is uh, the thing that God used. Uh, that's a universal thing. All of us fear death. Every human being fear death. Why? Because we realize that uh, there's going to be <clears throat> judgment uh, after death because we all are sinners. And the Chinese uh, believe that, you know, we all are sinners. And then when we die, we go to a place called hell. And uh, some of the belief have what we call 18 chambers or hell and so on and so forth. And I was brought up that direction. But I praise God that Jesus uh, died for my sins on the cross. And the Son of God died for me so that I don't have to go a place of hellfire. Next reflection that we have right here. So every person, if you and I sincerely uh, seek after Jesus, we will find him. So uh, the scripture reminds us, if you seek the Lord your God, you will find him. If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You see, God can be found. He is near. He is willing. And he is waiting. There's an unconditional love and care that Jesus had. All we had to do is to call upon him and he will be found. And so the scripture, Jesus himself said this, us and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And the, the Lord himself invite in Matthew 11, 25, uh, 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that's what I, I, I did on that night. And, uh, and I said to the Lord, Lord, if there be a God, have mercy upon me. Lord Jesus, he really died for my sins on the cross. Please save me and come into my life. And Jesus came. So Jesus invited us 
is willing and waiting. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor heavy laden, I will give you rest. And him that come to me, Jesus said, I will not cast out. Next reflection is this now. Doubts are normal at certain points of our life. All right? And uh, sometimes we go through trial and problems and so on. We look for Zama John the Baptist. He was in prison at that time. And so uh, John the Baptist uh, sent people to Jesus and said, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another. All right? And then you look, seven tells us, in that very same hour, Jesus healed many of their infirmities and plagued evil spirit, and many were blind. He gave up sight. So Jesus, by that sign gives, show it to the disciples of John. Yes. Then Jesus answered and said, see what happened? You go your way, you tell John now what things you have seen and heard. Because this sign gives will authenticate me as a Messiah, as Jesus, God, your Savior. The blind could see, the lame could walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf could hear, the dead are raised, the poor, the gospel is preached. And so the scripture reminds us this now. Next slide. Many signs, you see, that's why it says that in John 20, 30. Many signs, see, many other signs. Okay, that Jesus did in the presence of disciples that are not written in his book. So there are many other signs that authenticate. They show that Jesus is real, that he is truly the Son of God, the Christ, the anointed one, God, and, uh, and King, and prophet. That's the Messiah. But these are written. All right, yes, there are signs. But these signs are written. They are, they, are, they are written there. The signs, uh, the evidences, they are written there. These are written evidences of this sign. So when you read it, then you can believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So there are seven signs that John talks about it. For example, water into wine. The, he is the master of quality. The official sign, uh, the official son was healed. The master of distance, he healed from a distance. The in uh, valid of 38 years, Jesus, the master of time. Time is no problem with him. He still can heal people that have been sick for 38 years. He fed 5,000. He's a God of nature. And uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the sea was calm. Uh, excuse me. He's the God of nature, fed 5,000. He's the God of quantity. Uh, the uh, bo a man was born blind and he healed that. He's the God of mis uh, misfortune. And Lazarus was raised. Tells us that Jesus Christ is the master of death. No wonder he said, I am that I am. He said, I am that I am, that I am. Uh, I am is a, he is the eternal one. Uh, who has revealed himself to us. And so Jesus said that in the Gospel of John, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the shepherd fold. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. Praise God for that. All this is written so that we can believe uh, this uh what we call uh, uh, the Word of God that is uh, God's breath. God's Word is life. And when we believe, we have life through the name of Jesus Christ. That's the life of Philip. Praise God for that. And uh, practical, yes, and uh, helpful, and yet literal and confused. And yet God began to show that there is the divine, that he is the Son of God in all his life and the Son of God in all our life. Now, let's look at Doubting Thomas now. Here's uh, one that uh, <clears throat> we all uh, kind of identify ourselves with. Uh, this is the guy that, uh, you know, when you have a cup of water 
<clears throat> and uh, it is half filled, but uh, people who are pessimists and doubting will say the cup is half empty instead of saying it is half full. Uh, people uh, like Thomas with his personality always see the dark side of life, negative, and yet they're quite rigid, all right, mentally as well as emotionally. And they always look for a reason why something should not be changed. And they think of reason why something will not work. And if you and I have a solution to it, and they will uh, try to find problem to that solution. All right? Now, <clears throat> let's look at one incident. Okay? Let's look at one incident. All right? And let me read John 20, 19 together. Because it's good to look at God's word. Now, this is uh, Jesus himself. First day of the week, that is on Sunday, he rose up from the dead. And the same day, in the evening time, this is evening time now. Jesus rose up in the morning, this evening time. First day of the week, Sunday. The doors were shut. The disciples were assembled together because the fear of the Jews. Because the Jews, you know, realized that Jesus <clears throat> rose up from the dead and then they were looking for the disciples. Jesus came by and stood in the middle of them. Jesus went through the doors <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> and, and with a new body, all right? And said to them, Shalom be unto you, peace, internally as well outwardly be unto you. And when he so said, he showed unto them his hands and then he showed his sight. The disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Yes, they might have seen the hands and the side, but they saw the Lord. That is the identifying marks. Then Jesus said to them, Shalom be unto you again. All right? Just in case they didn't get it the first time. As the Father has sent me, even so send I you. The emphasis is now Shalom. Now, because the Father has sent me, so send I you now. And when I said this, you see, everything we do now, there's a mission. And so while there was shalom in their life, Jesus said, uh, Father, send me. Now I send you out with a mission of love and sacrifice and, uh, <clears throat> and community of oneness. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive ye the Holy, Holy Spirit that is going to uh, <clears throat> take over from Jesus Christ. Just like Jesus was with them, the Holy Spirit is going to be with them forevermore. And then he gives them the authority, the authority to preach that message of the remission of sin. And so that they were able to tell them uh, <clears throat> that when people believe in Jesus Christ, their sins will be forgiven. And then when, the, uh, when they refuse to believe in Jesus Christ, the sin will remain. Now, the next uh, 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 slide now. But Thomas, you see, one of the 12, all right, called uh, Did Didymus, he was not with them when Jesus came. We don't know where he went, but he was not with them. All right? The other disciples said unto him and said, Hey, listen, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, But. That's a very bad term, but that is there, all right? Uh, he would have said, wow, that's great, you know. Uh, I believe that in so of but he said in them, he said, except I see in his hand the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe, all right? Except, so he had conditioned on that. I want evidences. I want physical evidence evidences, all right? Or else I will not believe. Then, praise God, after eight days again, his disciples were with him and Thomas with them. We're glad that Thomas, although he didn't believe uh, the disciples, but yet he, he still gathered with them. And uh, after uh, the next Sunday came along, he was with them. Then came Jesus. Amen. I love this, you know. Then came Jesus. Isn't it so true, you know, in our fear, 
in our trouble, in our problem, uh, <clears throat> and we wonder what's happening and so on and so forth. We are anxious, we are fearful, and then came Jesus, all right? And the door has been shut. He seems said, you know, so many doors have been shut, but our Savior can come into every circumstances of life. He cares for us. He will work a mighty work in and through our life. He stood in the midst and he says again, peace be unto you. It's so very important. Shalom be unto you. Shalom has to do with uh, uh, <clears throat> peace so that the body, soul, and spirit becomes one. All right? There is no turmoil. There is no anxiety, no fear. The body, the soul, and spirit is at peace, at one. Then Jesus, particularly Jesus, went to Thomas. Jesus knew what was happening. Isn't it true? Because you look at it. Uh, Jesus looked at Thomas and, and almost spoke exactly what Thomas said. And told Thomas, he said, now you reach your finger. Behold my hands. Reach into my hand. Thrust into my sight. Be not faithless, but what? Believing. Our God knows each one of us, our uprising and our down sitting. Uh, the Lord know our hearts. The Lord even know our words even before we spoke. And so Thomas uh, later on realized that. But we see in the next uh, slide now. And then what happened? Straight away, straight away, he answered. He did go and touch and feel and so on. Uh, and he said, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they they have not seen, and yet what? Believe. Now let's study a little bit uh, into the <laughs> character of, uh, uh, <clears throat> of Thomas a little bit more. Okay? Let's look at it. First of all, we look at him now. He's a sincere person, but he is he's quite passive, but also he's quite resigned to uh, uh, to situation. And here what happens with this now, Lazarus was ill, and Jesus waited four days, all right? And then, and, <clears throat> and then Jesus said to the disciples, okay, Let's go. And, and then Thomas said what? Thomas said to the fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. You see? Now, uh, <clears throat> Thomas was, was resigned to it. Uh, he, he, he said, you know, he, uh, Lord, you know, the, the Jews are willing to stone you again, you know. Uh, and, and and yet, you know, he says, okay, if he wants to die, then let us die with him. He was resigned to it. All right? Uh, very sincere. And then we, it, it, it seems, uh, then Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the what? The way. So this is another time now. Jesus uh uh, told them that he was preparing a place for them. And then Thomas was saying, hey, uh, it's impossible to know the way if we don't know the destination. Uh, as human rationalism coming in, uh, blinded him to the spiritual dimension that faith is required. A pessimist, good thing always seem too good to be true. Bad things seem to happen all too what? Easily. The, you know, the pessimists have very short memories of, uh, of the good things, all right, of the positive things of life. All you need is one negative experience. It will blot out all those positive ones. You know? And... and, uh, and, and <clears throat> 
How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but through me. The way, I'm the way to provide eternal life. The truth, I'm God and I never lie. The life, then you can spend eternity with me because he is the life. Without the way, <laughs> there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Without life, there is no living. So let's look again into uh, uh, his <laughs> character. We saw his passive res uh, resignation. Now, look at him. Doubtful. He needed what? Tangible what? Proof. He says, I will not believe. See? Except I see in his hand the print of the nails and put my fingers in the prints of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. He will, he will not be deceived. He didn't trust the report uh, of those uh, uh, reliable witnesses. In, in fact, uh, <clears throat> what has happened is this, that... Uh, uh, there, there were five groups of people uh, that testified uh, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, now, next slide. He was faithful on it. Now we look at his faithfulness. Jesus, uh, Thomas answered and said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus answered unto him, Thomas, thou hast, that because thou hast seen, thou hast, what? <clears throat> Believe. <clears throat> so my friend, if we believe, if we have an open mind and a teachable uh, spirit, we don't need to be controlled by a negative attitude. Jesus wants to transform us into his image so that we can reflect the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Jesus can overcome doubts and lead us into faithfulness. And we know that Thomas himself went all the way from Jerusalem in the uh, and into uh, uh, Persia and into India, into South India, so that if you go to uh, India today, in South India, in the Kerala uh, 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 Kerala area, you find Ma Potoma churches, Ma Thomas churches, all right, and Thomas was the one that was missionary there, and of course he was faithful unto death. He was killed by a spear, all right? The symbol of Thomas is a spear head. So by the way of, uh, uh, by the way of introduction, okay, let's look at it. Uh, <clears throat> we look at uh, what we call uh, character labels. Okay, let's look at it. So we study a little bit uh, and, and into uh, Thomas' life. He was a pessimist. Uh, pessimist attaches worst possible scenario to events. Negative mental attitude. Okay? Lacking hope and joy. Marked by disbelief and distrust. Belief that the worst can always happen. Okay. So uh, sometimes these are genetically predisposed. That means that it is in your DNA. All right, but more often is a result of external circumstances, bad relationship, job loss, illness, trauma, and so on and so forth. And so people become negative. Now, pessimism can be unlearned. Okay, you be aware of it, you seek help, you work at it together with God and with friends. And sometimes a pessimist have a uh, a problem of pushing people away. A skeptic. Skeptic refuse to believe without visible, tangible proof. Show me, show me. They ask and they want to collect evidence. They want to see proof. And so Thomas is both a pessimist and a skeptic. All right. The attitude, they have a doubting attitude towards values in life, towards plan, towards uh, character. It can be healthy if you are questioning to try to discover truth. Other than that, you know, it's going to be a big problem. 
All right, now let's see now Thomas, the process of Thomas. Next, let's look at it. Why is it that, that Thomas says, I will not believe? Well, number one, he was kind of uh, shocked when Jesus died on the cross. Uh, <clears throat> he thought that Jesus was going to be the king uh, to, uh, uh, to have a physical kingdom. So he nursed his so sorrow. <clears throat> he brooded over his fear, a lot of tension and fear, even at this particular time in Jerusalem. Now he didn't hear the peace be unto you. All right? Uh, that's a sure foundation. Uh, when you hear Jesus saying, Peace be unto you, my peace uh, I live unto you, not as the word giver, giver unto you, there will come our fear. All right? Peace, inward and outward. Sin to be forgiven, that's peace. Uh, slavery to sin will be broken, that's peace. Fears and cares are in his hands now, there will be peace. Our lives settle for all eternity. There will be peace. He didn't hear it. He was not there the first time. And in fact, Jesus said it twice. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you to the other disciple twice for emphasis. Then thirdly now, in the beginning, he didn't recognize the importance of what? Fellowship. You know, people who are pessimists, they try to push other people away. But you know, the scripture said, where two or three gather in together in my name, I will be in the midst of them. We need to gather together so that Jesus will be in, uh, in the midst of us in, uh, in a, a more powerful way. And so the command in the scripture said, please don't forsake the assembly of yourself together because you need to exalt one another. Exalt means encourage one another, all right? Because the days are evil, okay or not? Uh, so thank God, at least later on, uh, he, uh, he uh, the, the second Sunday, uh, he went back and be with the other disciples. Look, the crisis of faith. Next, uh, uh, next uh, slide. The, the uh, <coughs> crisis of faith. We see he, uh, uh, he endows his uh, solitude. Number two, he intensified his what? Skepticism. Intensified. All right. Now, try to remember this now. Um, I will not believe. All right. Speech now. All right. Speech gives staying power to our attitude. Attitude are habits of thoughts. And, uh, and, and the Bible says now that death and life are by the power of the tongue. All right. I, I, I will not believe. So that was his inner feeling expressed by his words and then by his behavior. And so he gave death in his life. Death means separation in his life and it didn't give him any life at all. So be careful. All right? When you turn over your mind and you speak out loud, it's called self-talk. The self-talk are actually very what we call automatic sometimes. All right? And because of our depraved nature, Paul said the things I like to do that I hate to do, the things that I want to, uh, the things I like to do, I hate to do, the things I hate to do, that which I do is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And many times the self-talk are reruns, reruns. And then, uh, and, and it seems that in the reruns, rerun meaning you say it again and again and so on, and it seems to have about 1,300 words a minute. And some of us also do it in pictures. And that's why sometimes uh, we have dreams, you know, in the night and so on, because we have been worrying about it, and we've been talking about it in sort of fall, and it will intensify. Now, watch the next thing now. There's a principle of what we call replacement. The more we think about something, the stronger it takes hold. And the more it will what? Expand. So the more you will think of negative things, things that are negative, it will intensify. All right? It will take hold of you, intensify. 
And the more it expands into other areas of your life and my life, then, you know, our, our what we call perspective of life begin to change. So watch out your self-talk. Watch out your speech. Watch out what you say. Watch out what you say to your children because you are speaking either death or life to them. Watch out how you speak to one another. All right? Show you how to be gentle, <clears throat> how to be <clears throat> tender and patient with them. Sometimes we get so ir irritable and so on. Watch out because, for example, when we start, we start gossiping, before we realize it, the gossip takes hold of us and we're gossiping all the time and it expands to other areas of our life and so on, then uh, it will lead to death. All right? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Next now, as we look at it, the next is that he in, insisted on sign. Except I see, except I touch. So he laid down condition. He demanded it. But actually, he did not really expect to see it anyway. He just wanted to say it in sort of form. He didn't believe him. Now, skepticism is actually attention catching. All right? You know why people, uh, you know, oh, I don't believe in anything. You know, there's maybe agnosticism. But the skeptic, I, I, I don't believe, I do. I, that's proven, this and so on. Prove it to me uh, there is a physical God. You know, for example, people say, prove to me uh, there's a God. I, I can't see God in Zona Fall. Show me God. They come stuff and so on. Now, they give a kind of amount of sympathy, right? Oh, poor, poor you, poor you. you know? But number two, he allowed to escape what? Responsibility. Then you know what? If you say, well, I can't see God, so therefore I don't have to believe him. Uh, so I escape the responsibility. And then, you know, God then, then uh, doesn't have to put me into hell or whatever it's going for. You know, that kind of reason they have and so on. They want to escape the responsibility to turn away from the sin, to repent, and to believe in Jesus Christ. And then he, form, he provide a form of what? excitement. Yeah, I see people, yeah, they go around, if they don't believe in Jesus Christ, they go around and say, they say, I don't believe in God, I don't see Him, and even Christians can't prove it, and so on, and, and I'm very free, this and so on, they, they feel that kind of so-called freedom and so on. Well, wait until God bring them through a crisis, and then we will see what happened. You see, they, they, someone say now, you know what a foxhole? Foxhole are things that uh, soldiers in a battle, they dig on the hole down there so that they can uh, uh, go into the hole when the bombs drop uh, and, uh, and the bullets uh, begin to fly. They are safe down there in the foxhole. People say now, there are no atheists in the foxhole. That means that when you are in a situation of trouble, facing death, there's nobody they said, oh, there is, there's no God. I better pray to, to God. God have mercy upon me. God help me. God, if you get me out of this, I will do this and I will promise this. So, so uh, why? Because you see, God make us so that there is eternity, that there, there is that desire in our heart. And then when we need help, we know that uh, somehow or another, there's somebody greater than us. And we uh, call that God. And of course, in the Bible, we, we talk about God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we cry out to God to help us. Number four now, it re so that we can rearrange to rationalize. And so we arrange our life. Then we rationalize. We say there's no physical thing. I only believe in physical evidence and so on. And then we rearrange our life. Everything needs to be re-rationalized re and so on and so forth. All right. Now, next now, crisis of faith. Next one. Now, no wonder Jesus talked about it when he says about the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the next uh, crisis of faith insists on signs. Can you find that? Okay, good. Now, remember this. Miracles almost always create distance rather than what? Intimacy. We see Jesus' example, for example. Okay, Jesus' example. 
after the feeding of 5,000, then Jesus told them now, I'm the bread of life. He that come with me will never hunger, and so on. And then uh, he said it metaphorically, you know, uh, you eat of my body and drink of my blood. And what happened was this now, the people, after seeing the miracles, and yet the Bible said many of your disciples went back and walked no more with him. So miracles almost always create distance rather than what? Intimacy. Because you see, doubts really cannot be what? Satisfied. No evidence is ever fully, finally enough. All right? There's excuses people have. Look at the Old Testament where Moses, you know, had templates and, 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 and they went into the, uh, the desert. They could see the, the pillar uh, of a fire in the night and the clouds in the day. God's present with them. And yet the people rebelled and rejected uh, 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 Yahweh, re rejected God himself. The I am that I am, the eternal one that is re that has revealed himself uh, to many signs and wonders and so on. And, 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 and so it, it doesn't mean that it's going to create a, 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 what we call a, a repentance and faith. In fact, it might even provide that distance that is there. However, the scripture reminds us that there is something that's sure, there's something that's living, and that is the written and living word, the Holy Bible. For example, we have the Old Testament prophecy that is given to us. In Psalm 16, 11, in 71 verse 2, Thou shalt show me the path of life, in the, your presence, fullness of joy, in thy right hand, pleasure forevermore. Thou shalt quicken me again and bring me up again from the depth of earth. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, He shall, for he shall receive me, Selah. There's a messianic psalm that is there. They prophesied that Jesus, yes, is, <clears throat> you know, died, but he rose up again from the dead. And God himself will redeem and bring him up. All right? So there's a written and the living word. All right. So the scripture, Old Testament prophecy. Next. Uh, next now. Uh, next slide. Jesus himself prophesied it at least six times when he was alive. He says, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto the disciples. While he did all the signs and miracles and so on, and they began to start to teach the people, all right? So you have the gospel that is given to us in Matthew 22, 23, 24, 25, all the teaching. And then he began to, began to show unto the disciple, uh, disciple now how he must go to Jerusalem. He must suffer many things of the elders, chief priests, and the scribes. And be killed and be raised again the, the day. Not just once or twice and so on, but six times. My friend, God say what he means. He means what he says. So even before the foundation of the world, it has been in the counsel of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that Jesus was to come and then he was to go to Jerusalem. He was going to suffer many things. He's going to be killed, but yet he's going to be raised again on the third day. Oh, crisis of faith. Next, uh, next uh, slide, and we praise God for that. We see now, Jesus now came again the next Sunday and purposely talked to uh, Thomas, personal confrontation. And Jesus met him at the point of need. All right? And so we all, we ask again, how did Jesus actually know his exact words? Because Jesus knew, because he is God himself, and he knew all men, he knew their thoughts, even uh, their words, even before they said in so on. 
and 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 Jesus in his grace and his mercy went straight away uh to uh after he had said peace be unto you he went over straight away to Thomas and he said to Thomas now touch me uh, <clears throat> and feel me but stop doubting and start what believing be not faithless but believing and so my friends seeing does not remove the necessity of what believing and so that all those people that saw the miracles doesn't mean that they will have great intimacy they must be believing because the scripture said who whatsoever is not of faith is of sin so seeing doesn't mean there's believing oh but seeing and believing will be internalizing and when you believe you'll be seeing so believing is seeing and then jesus demonstrate his victory through his nail pierced hand is it okay now touch my nail pierced hand touch into my uh, my my sight and see the wound the evidence look to the wounds of jesus wounds of love and sacrifice but also wounds of victory so what happened because on the cross my friend on the cross jesus has forgotten forgiven you all your trespasses jesus has forgiven all my trespasses he wash away wipe away all the handwriting of ordinances that were against us you know god has a book of uh, your sins and my sins is written down and and god just wipe it clean he took it took all our trespasses and all our a book of sin out of the way he nailed it to the cross so right in order to cross and then what else not only really just sin but satan himself then he spoil principalities and power he make a show of them openly triumphing over them in the cross on the cross spoil means he just uh, make them inoperative in our life uh, the the principalities and powers satanic what we call uh, classes uh uh, uh and principalities and power these are satanic forces satanic levels of forces uh jesus make them out of operation in our life so we don't have to give a uh, way to satan anymore uh and uh, and then we don't have to fear death because uh, uh satan put the fear into us and jesus had the power uh over death and over hell and then we find now next slide straight away his response you see he didn't touch uh he didn't feel straight away he cried out my lord and my god his response from total doubt to dynamic uh <clears throat> reassure faith radical belief inward belief in him in jesus christ it was sudden it was sincere it was joyous he passed a test my lord and my god lord god deity lord master god uh theos uh, in the old testament you be elohim theos is the greek so he identified jesus as master uh the names of deity and he is his my my twice for emphasis so this who's dead is now alive lord master of all king of king he's got over death and hell i'm he that lives jesus said and was dead yes but behold i'm alive forevermore hallelujah amen and now have the keys of hell and of death praise god and that's a personal faith he said my lord and my god my lord my god twice my my why because emphasis emphasis twice my lord my god 
Just like Jesus said, peace be unto you, peace be unto you twice. So this again is emphasis, internalize it with a, with a, what we call a radical kind of belief, my Lord and my God. And so the scripture says, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwells in him and he dwells in God. So next, we see Thomas pass the test, my Lord and my God. Here's some of the blessing of resurrection. He lives, all right? He's a proof of his deity. He was declared. Jesus was declared the Son of God with power. We think of Jesus as our Savior, as dying for our sins on the cross. Yes, he did. But actually, he is the Son of God with power, all right? He's a great God of God, King of kings, Lord of lords. By according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the one. That Jesus is the Son of God. That's a proof. Secondly, is the sure foundation of our faith. And if Christ be not raised, your faith will be vain. You are yet in your sin. But because Christ is raised, our faith is not in vain. Our faith is not empty. And we are no more in our sin. All right? Because sin was laid upon Jesus Christ. All right? Your sins and my sins were laid on Jesus Christ on the cross. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, he was buried. Our sin was buried with him. And he rose up again from the dead. And because he lives, we also live in and through him. And next slide. And there's an abiding what we call <clears throat> security. All right? Security. Once saved, we're always saved. Why? Because he is able to save us to the uttermost. They come to God by him. We come to God the Father, to Jesus Christ. He will save us to the very end. To the uttermost. Why? Because he ever liveth. He liveth. He liveth. Jesus liveth. He is making intercession for us. He ever liveth. And he is praying for us. And his prayer always will be answered. Just like he prayed for Peter when uh, Peter was going to deny Jesus Christ three times and so on. And so even right now, my friend, if nobody else pray for you, Jesus is praying for you. And his prayer will always be answered. And we have the abiding security. Once we believe in him, he ever delivered, he's able to save us to the end of it, to the uttermost, to the, to, to the end of our life. Nothing going to separate us from the love of God. Uh, no, not uh, a life or death or trouble or persecution or the devil or principality and power and so on. Because in Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors through him. And then number four is a prerequisite to a fruitful life. Jesus said, because I live, you shall what? Live also. All right. Fruitful life. Because now it is the resurrected life that is in and through us. We don't live by our own uh, earthly mortal life, but we now, Christ liveth in and through us. And because Christ lived in and through us, then uh, we have the abundant life. Jesus said, I come to give you life. I, I give you life abundantly. All right? So we have his abundant life in and through us right now. And then uh, <clears throat> and then forevermore. Because he lived, we shall live also. And then number five now is a pledge of our own resurrection. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them that we sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So what sleep with Jesus mean those uh, uh those uh they were sleep in the New Testament has the idea those have been dead uh physically, and so that Jesus said uh in this way. All right, I die for you. I rose up for you. Dead. You are uh, you. When you die, you die in Jesus Christ. Uh, you will be raised up from the dead when Jesus come again, uh, <clears throat> with a <clears throat> with a shout and the trump of God, and Jesus will uh, will ch change us 
but the, the, then uh, the mortality will put on immortality. The corruption will put on in corruption. In weakness will become uh, in glory and power and strength. Praise God for that. Flesh of our own resurrection. Next, let's think about it now. Some principles to follow. All right. Number one, yes, honest doubt. Good to have. If we have some honest doubt, we need to uh, get it to the Lord. But honest doubt should lead us to honest desire for truth. All right. And so again, seek ye the Lord what he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is what? Near. God is willing and waiting. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. See, while they were yet speaking, I will hear. You see? So, so the Lord said this way. See, now listen. So before you call, I will answer you. And while yet speaking, I will hear. Because I am waiting. I am willing. You are the one. If there be any problem, it will not be God's fault. If people get to hell, uh, people don't have their sin forgiven, it's not because of God's fault. God has done everything for you and for me and for others and so forth. And, and, and he even said that even before you Call, I will answer you. Even when you yet you are speaking, I will hear. And so, let us come to Him, uh, and 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 God will save us. And and if we have doubts, uh, and, and and Jesus said, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life." And the truth, He Himself, the truth will come. Now, then number two, we can be influenced by our temperament. But we don't have to be controlled by what? By it. All right. We might say, oh, okay, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> we might be introvert and extrovert. Uh, we'll be a bit uh, pessimistic and we may be, we'll be influenced uh, because of bad relationship and traumatic experiences and so forth. But we don't have to be controlled by it. Why? Because Jesus said, if you are in me, you are a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become what? New. And because you know why? Jesus come into your life. The resurrected Christ come into your life. And then we need, we don't have to be controlled by our disposition, our temperament, our negative attitude into the fall. And we ask the Holy Spirit to control us. And we will have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we will allow him uh, to give us love, to give us joy, give us peace, give us patience, give us gentleness, uh, <clears throat> give us uh, goodness, uh, give us uh, 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 <clears throat> faithfulness and meekness, and give us self-control. Next uh, slide. God allows crisis of faith. And sometimes God allows certain things to happen in our life. Next slide, my brother. Okay, next slide. Okay. Uh, Okay, all right. To use uh, to use it to help us to focus, to refocus, to learn and relearn by the grace of God. And so Paul said this. Now he said, "Don't be ignorant of trouble." Right? Okay. Don't be ignorant of your trouble or my trouble, because we have the sentence of death in ourselves. We know what it is to die daily. Paul says, "I die daily." We know what it is, you know, uh, that he says, uh, <clears throat> I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live by not, no we, but live by Christ that liveth in us. And the life we live, we don't live uh, by our own self, but by the, the, the life of Jesus Christ and the love of Jesus Christ in and through us. And so he says, we don't trust ourselves, but in God who what? Raised up the what? Dead. And so, crisis of faith to challenge us and to test us so that we will focus on Him and Him alone. We have what we call deeper intimacy. When we have deeper intimacy, we know the length and the breadth, the height and the depth of His love. 
then we'll have what we call larger capacity. Larger capacity, larger love for God and for people. And then we have an enlarged capability. God enlarge our giftedness, enlarge our talent, enlarge our, our uh, uh, the way he's going to use us, our capabilities, so that uh, uh, as we have been faithful over little, he will give us much that that our life will be a, a, a broken a broken bread and uh, and pour out wine so that uh, God himself in and through us may minister to the whole world. Then Jesus talked about the excellent way. Jesus said to uh, uh, Thomas, yes, you have seen, you believe, okay. But blessed are they that have not seen and yet have what? Believe. Uh, that is the blessedness. This is called a be attitude. All right? All right. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are poor in spirit, for theirs uh, is the kingdom of God, and so on. Blessed are merciful, that they will find mercy. But here's a blessing. What a blessing. The person to be congratulated. The person uh, that we look up to. There are those that have not seen and yet what? Have believed. A satisfied faith. Sufficient evidence because there are special promises in the word of God. We suffer no loss because we have not seen Jesus Christ in the flesh. In fact, we are blessed. Blessed are they. They have not seen and yet have believed. The next slide. You see, faith, my friend, satisfied faith is possible. Next slide. It's possible without what we call physical sight. Why? Because God's word, the Bible, create faith. Because the Bible is God's breath. All right? All scripture is what? God's breath. Every time you read God's word, it is life because it's God's breath into us. And so John said these are written. That you believe in Jesus Christ as a son of God. You believe you have life through his name. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. So you, you, you must not uh, look down on God's word and the preaching of God's word and the reading of God's word and, and the hearing God's word. In addition to that now, not only there is the breath, not only the life, but the word of God gave us success. Joshua 1 8. He gave us life that we can abundant life. He gave us prosperity. Prosperity means living life with hope. Living life, whatever we're doing with hope, because Jesus is our hope and we have the blessed hope of his coming. That is joy. That is wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to be able to uh, craft up uh, what we call a, a plan, to be able to uh, uh, to uh, direct, uh, to know, to find out uh, what's going on and direct it with wisdom. And, and, and that is life living life, understanding it, the privilege to understand uh, uh, the, the times we live in because now we have time or wars and rumors of wars and pestilences and earthquakes and so on, we begin to understand Jesus coming is near. Quickly he might come. And so we cried out to the Lord, so come quickly, Lord Jesus. And then we said, Lord, help us to get the gospel out by the grace of God. And then the word of God also gave us peace. Gave us peace. Okay, the next slide. So faith is possible. Without physical sight. Next slide now. So that means this now. We must read the word of God. Instead of reading our novels. And okay. Sometimes we read other people. Sermon. Book. Whatever we saw. But we read God's word. We memorized it. All right. We put it into our heart. And then when we put it in our heart. We meditate. The word meditate means to cheer the, the cut. C-U-D. It gives us a picture, you know, of a cow that goes up into the <clears throat> to the meadow 
and he chum, 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 chum the grass. And then he put the, the grass into one of his stomach because the uh, uh, the cow had more than one stomach. And then uh, <clears throat> and then after he has uh, uh, put enough in there, he goes down under a tree and he lie there. He vomited out uh, all the uh, uh, chum grass out from one of the stomach. And then he began to get in his mouth. He began to chew, 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 chew. And the juice get in, juice, chew comes out. And then it goes down to another part of the stomach. And then from there, it gets up to the rest of the body. Is it a wonderful to see a black cow that takes in green grass, will give you white milk and yellow cheese? <laughs> Med meditate. So my friend, you meditate, you, 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 you read, you remember, then you take it out, you meditate, chew it, chew it, chew it, and, uh, and get so many things out of God's word, you know, then you personalize, personalize it, okay, and, 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 and you, you said it, it's, it's, it's about me, for example, you know, in, in, in some, uh, uh, <clears throat> 91, where God says, you know, because you have set your love upon me, I will deliver you. I will set you on high because you know my name. And uh, when uh, when you uh, call upon me, I will answer you. I will be with you in time of trouble. Uh, <clears throat> I will deliver you and honor you. With long life, what I gave to you, and I will show you my salvation. You take it from the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to set my love upon you. You promise to deliver me. You promise to send me on high. You promise when I pray, you are supposed to answer me. You will deliver me. You will honor me. You will give me long life. You will show me your salvation. You will deliver me day in, day out. Then you harmonize it. Harmonize means you sing scriptures. And it's good, you know. Uh, yes, you, you take God's uh, a word. And then you uh, uh, put it in lyrics and so on. Put God's word in there. So when you sing, you're singing scriptures. Uh, your, 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 your singing is theologically correct because it's scriptures and it's God's word we put there. And so the Lord said, when you read my word, you hear my voice. Don't harden your heart. Don't provoke me. Provoke means we fight against him. We resist him. We say no to him. Don't harden it. All right? Say, soften your heart and say yes. Then the Lord said, Behold, I stand at the door of your uh, heart and knock. You hear my voice? All right? You hear? You, you're listening now to what we've been saying tonight. You hear the voice of God. You open your heart. You say, Lord Jesus, I'm opening my heart to you now. And the Lord says, I will come to you and I will sup with you. The word sub has to do with fellowship. When you're having a meal with somebody, you have fellowship, you enjoy one another, you like one another, and and we have a communion, a community. We sub with me, and, and we'll sub with him, and he will be with us. Now, dear Lord Jesus, let's pray together. We pray, Lord, even now there might be some that do not know you. We pray that personal Lord may turn and say to you, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. I believe you say, come unto me, all ye that labor heavy laden, I will give you rest. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. I want to come to you. You died for me. You were buried. You rose up again from the dead. I want to believe in you right now. Please forgive me of my sin and come into my life. And if we do that, God is waiting and willing. And God says, whosoever believe in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You believe in Jesus. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. You call on Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, save me. And Jesus will save me, will save you right now. And then Christians, my friend, praise God. Think of uh, uh, <clears throat> Philip. And we ask God to have mercy upon us. We don't need to have to see signs and wonders. We don't have the aesthetic experiences and demand every answer uh, to our 
question, uh, to every question, or have some uh, 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 funny feelings and so on and so forth, or some uh, uh, miracles and so on, then we believe. Well, the scripture reminds us, we have not seen him, but yet we believe we are blessed, blessed. And each day in your life, my friend, the life that God wants to live is a resurrected life. Jesus lived so that we can live. Will you ask, Lord Jesus, please control my life. Lord Jesus, your, resurrect, your life may be manifested in and through me. Your resurrected life. Not only as Savior, but as Lord of Lord, King of King, as God, the very God. Bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's see the next slide. Can we see the next slide there? All right. Now, next slide, uh, Brother Cornelius. Now, those who are doing it for credit, you listen to it again, okay? You have to listen at least twice through it. We're going to send you out the audio later on. What three lessons have you learned from the studies? Okay, so you write the three lessons. You be detailed and be specific and write that one, two, three, five, and so on. Then what will be the three blessings that you want to share? You will talk about lessons you learned, but now you said, okay, what blessing uh, you share? The lessons are different from blessing. Lesson means you say, okay, I see where I'm wrong in sort of form. I'm going to change. Blessing means, oh, these are the blessings that I have and I've been blessed and uh, and then to share uh, in my life and in my ministry, share with others. To whom am I sharing it and how I'm sharing it? All right, this blessing in my life, my ministry, I want to share somebody. I want to share uh, in this way and that way and so on and forth. Okay, now, so right now, uh, we are going to take some time to share one blessing each, if you have. It's a voluntary thing. If you have a blessing, just share with us so that we can say amen together. If you have a prayer, just uh, uh, let us know. We'll pray uh, together with you. 